What's up, everyone? Welcome to This Day in Philly Sports History for January 11th, 2023. Joe came back in the lineup last night. Sixers destroyed the Pistons 147-116. to Joe had 36, hardened a triple-double. And honestly, this is what this team should be. This is every night. Maybe Harden shouldn't get a triple-double every night. I mean, he's capable, but Joe gets 30-plus points. Harden has double-digit assists. He gets his 20. I think he was just under 20 last night. But this is what that team should be. They should be just unstoppable. Like I said, we noticed it when Joe was out at the Chicago game. I still think they need some big man depth, and I feel like that's always been the issue with this team since Joe has been there. But, I mean, yeah, the Pistons suck. However, this is the way they should be. This is, to me, that's the blueprint, Doc. If you're listening, Joe gets his, Harden, and then facilitates, and he scores. And it goes back to what we talked about uh, during the Sixers preview uh, there was a clip of Doc talking to to James Harden in practice where he said, listen, got to feed Joe, let him get his, but he need, I need you to be a scorer and a facilitator. And when I think Harden's playing his best, he's not the scorer he was back when he was in Houston, but he can still give you 20 and 10 assists every night. So that that's what we need, and this is when they're playing at their best. And it was a good get-right game for them to have Joe back. So we'll definitely take it. The Owls picked up a win over Tulsa, their fourth conference uh, win. They're 4-1 now in the AAC. Kind of a sloppy game. Um, they were up big and then just got slapped. Like Damian Dunn got ejected for a flagrant two. Uh, Jaleel White had a double technical and got ejected. Like it was just – kind of weird but anyway we'll take the win they set a top of the actually they i don't know if they're at the top I, I haven't checked the standings recently to see what houston has done but good start for conference play for them so let's keep it rolling and, and get under composure i mean jesus you can't have two guys two of your best guys getting ejected uh early by early in the second half not not good especially when you're going to be playing the better teams um Quick Eagles update. They were off yesterday. Everything's fine, but playoff tickets went on sale. And this is more of a rant against Ticketmaster. Something needs to be done because everything's done online now, which is fine. But you have these the the ticket reseller and the bots, I guess, coming in. And they were sold out ridiculously quick. And now for a standing room ticket, it's like 400 bucks, which is absolutely insane. I mean there's no reason so like if you have the money great and and to all you guys out there who are buying these tickets on the secondhand market that's why they're able to do it if you guys weren't paying four hundred dollars for a standing room ticket there's they would have no market um so i i do miss the old school i mentioned uh back on new year's eve going into boscov's and and just going and buying the ticket or when people were waiting in line overnight for when they were going on sale now it's people are just sitting there and like have their computer. Pro- it's just not fair. There something needs to be done. Ticketmaster is not high on my list anyway because of their fees and everything. Even when we try to sell our tickets, like they, they charge us like a ridiculous percentage amount um, just to to post it. And it's like basically you're just hosting the site for everybody. But until something changes, this is the, such is the world we live in. Luckily for us, the Eagles are on top of things with season tickets, and basically they we had to go three weeks ago plus say, hey, are you opting in? And within an hour of them winning the game on Sunday, they charged our card. So they're, they, don't, they don't fuck around with their money. But sticking with the Eagles today, we're going to go back to 1981 and probably – I would argue up until the Super Bowl win in Super Bowl 52, the most iconic moment in Philly, maybe not Philly, but Eagles uh, sports history um, up there with the Benaric hit on Gifford and and laying down on James Taylor, uh, Jim Taylor at the end of the 1960 NFL championship. But on this day, it was the NFC championship game against the Cowboys. Uh, at the vet, it was a wind chill of minus three. So they had practice in Tampa Bay all week, which I don't understand. You're going to play in this cold. Shouldn't you practice in it? I know they didn't have the practice bubble. That was something that came later. But, hey, what do I know? 
Uh, it was the first postseason meeting against the Cowboys, who also went 12 and four. They the Eagles won the tiebreaker that year. So start the game um, three and out. The Cowboys did bad punt by Danny White, who the quarterback was also the punter. So the Eagles got the ball to Dallas 42. Now, before I get into what happened next, leading up to that, and I guess part of the reason why Dick Vermeil took them to Tampa to practice is Wilbur Montgomery was banged up. He had a sore knee and a bruised thigh, so he wasn't really practicing. And it was questionable on – I think there's no doubt he was going to play, but just how effective he was going to be, how much he was going to play, and how much they were going to use him, especially with it being so cold. Well – very next play, Wilbur Montgomery, 42 yards through the Dallas defense, put the Eagles up 7 nothing. And for my money, it, it, to me, it just I would have just assumed because the, the, it was over. And I didn't really realize this, but Dallas came back, and this game was tied at halftime, 7-7. And there was, like, wasted chances. Um, Jaworski was throwing interceptions. Um, and there was just the, or I'm sorry, he didn't throw any interception in the first half, but there were penalties in the first half and it just, just not taking advantage of what they had in front of them, which up until this point was sort of what those Eagles had done in the postseason. And even in that game against the Vikings before in the divisional round, it was a sloppy game, but the second half, the defense came out, forced four turnovers, held Dallas to 206 yards for the game. Um, Jaworski didn't necessarily have his best game. He only threw for 91 yards and had two interceptions, which leading back to that Minnesota game and then looking ahead to the Super Bowl kind of should have been a concern for everybody involved that he was just turning the ball over left and right. He had three in the Super Bowl, two in this game. I forget how many he had against the Vikings, but he only had 12 for the season. So Jaworski was not playing his best football leading into the postseason and into the Super Bowl. Luckily for them, Wilbert had 194 yards. I don't know if maybe the the extra workload and the cold affected him because I know he also didn't have a good Super Bowl. But cool fact about this game, and I love it, and kind of just ties in with that whole Eagles-Dallas rivalry, general manager Jim Murray got to choose. The home team always chose what jerseys – uh, the team where, and I guess it's still like that. And I don't, I don't know if the NFL has a say now because of all the different alternative jerseys, but back then the general manager did. And typically the Eagles wore their green jerseys at home. And I know like there was like sometimes the weather, but whatever, but the Cowboys hated their blue jerseys. They felt they were unlucky. They felt they never really won big games in them. So, not even really thinking about it. Jim Murray's like, well, wait a minute. Let's just play a little bit of games with them. He chose the Eagles to wear their white jersey and force the Cowboys to wear their blue jerseys, which were unlucky and basically set set owner Tex Stram off on a rant. He was furious. He was pissed off about it. Um, and it was just, like I said, little, little things like that gamesmanship. But if it gets into your mindset that, hey, we don't win in these blue jerseys, now you're making us wear these blue jerseys on the road in the NFC Championship game. In this case, it paid off. The Eagles won 20-6, went to Super Bowl 15, um, where we'll, we'll get into that in another week or so uh, about what happened there. But on this day, things were great for – the Eagles, and like I said, up until their win in Super Bowl 52, probably the most crowning, at least in modern history, the crowning moment of Eagles history was beating the Cowboys, finally beating the, the Dragon, so to speak, and going to the Super Bowl, even though things didn't necessarily work out the way they should have. So on this day, back in 1981, the Eagles beat the Cowboys 20-6 to at Veterans Stadium, for, or 20 to 7 in Veterans Stadiums to go to Super Bowl 15. Go have yourselves a Wednesday. Fuck Ticketmaster. And until the next time, I'll see you when I see you.